Now let's jump over to the Q&A, which is my favorite part of the whole show. And let's get to it. Jerry, let's do this. Let's do it. Da, da, da. Let's see. I start out a couple. Ah, Nick says that Solana is going to the 5 to $7 region. Jerry, what do you think about Solana? You got any Solana? If you're, I, I own one. <laughs> okay. Hey, you won't be left out. That's hey, good. I staked, it. I staked it, and it's it's in a private, uh, what do they call it, browser extension wallet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You probably got it on, uh, what is it, Phantom? No. Believe it or not, it's on Soulflare. No, oh, okay. I never heard of that one. Works out pretty well. Well, you got you got a whopping one, one uh, Solana, which according to Nick could go to five bucks. So, well, here's wow. here's the thing. There are the likes and dislikes of specific projects are all individual, and I could never fault anybody for liking something, even if I don't like it. You know what I mean? It's yeah, nah, it's okay. I think. Like people hate, some people hate Solana. Some people love it because they say it's fast. It, I got to tell you, uh, my friend Steven here who owns uh, the San Juan Smokehouse in Puerto Rico, he loves he loves it. He goes, if you're trying to use DeFi with it, he goes, it's super fast and super cheap. People like that. I said, what about it's, uh, you know, downtime? He's like, yeah, can't be up all the time. And I was like, well, that's true. But I mean, I mean, we'd like to see it up as much as possible. Uh, Jarky says he's waiting for Solana to die. And then uh, Crypto Golf says, thank you, Robert, timing the stream so we can watch USA Wales in an hour from now. That'd be good. On In Qatar, I believe. World Cup. The, World Cup, World maybe. Cup. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Jarky also says, uh, he trusts me, but people can always go into corrupt, corrupt, corrupt mode, so I trust him 51%. I got to tell you, that's, that's, that's pretty high numbers. That's high praise. And then uh, I trust myself more than others, which is a good, actually, that's probably the best advice you can have. Right there. Let's see. Tom Crown is here. Legend. This guy's showing up. Bro. He's everywhere. Let's see. Hey, great interview yesterday, Tom. Thank you for critiquing my strategy. We talked about the Dogecoin millionaire yesterday. And so so, so speaking of, of profits, Jerry, you know how much he, so he had a hundred, run a hundred K or so, dumped into Dogecoin. I think he was up two, three million somewhere on there. And then with the recent crash, he was right back to where he started. He took zero profits. What do you think? I think, think he'll take profits. I think a lot of us, I think of a lot of us in 2021 did exactly the same thing. Yeah. And I don't think I will make that mistake again. I gotta agree. This one you know here. what? Even though I heard people say they the people that lived through the 2017. I heard them say in 2018, and especially in 2019, they were saying, "Oh, you man, I won't, I won't let that happen again." And I happen to have a friend who's one of those guys who, in 2021, let it happen again. He missed the he missed the top of both. <laughs> Here, I so I so I have a question for everybody in the audience. It happens. Well, well, it, happens. it happens. I have a question for everybody in the audience. Uh, do you still believe in the, in the diamond hands theory or are you going to take some profits? Because everybody's different, right? Some people are like, I'm here for generational wealth. You know, forget Jerry and Rob. We're going to go generational wealth straight up and uh, I'm just going to hold it for 20 years. Are you going to do that type of thing or maybe take a little profits and especially in the next bull run? I'm curious if people are going to do that or not. And let's see. Uh, Bicky, from the show. Rob's bat token was getting up there. I hope so. Bat, basic attention token. What a that dream. was probably the next big thing. Uh, <laughs> Steven says the Chinese and Binance want to hack your crypto and steal it. I think everybody wants to steal crypto. Let's let's not uh, let's not put it to one specific country. Everybody does. That's why it's all a scam, right? Oh, Jerry, have you been following this story? Cardano yes. stablecoin. Well, not no, no. USDA. Um, the, right, US USDA. Sounds like the beef. USDA backed uh -huh. by US dollars. Interesting. Oh. Uh, the, the stable coin thing isn't final. Like right? they're going to be stable coin wars coming up here, battles. But whoever gets it right and whoever wins is going to have so much velocity because everything is collapsing into a digital state. Value True. is no different right? Value is no different. So we're, we're watching the proliferation 
of all these incredible new payment structures and systems. They're all going to use a, a digital medium to transact. It's going to be interesting to see who wins. Who wins. There's, there was that one, and also they talk about a privacy coin coming up on Cardano. That was Ooh. another big thing. Yes. Ooh. Okay. But I don't know if it's a coin or a chain. I, I couldn't I couldn't get the that's a layer one I love. I love Cardano and I have a I have a nice size bag of it and I just stake it. I I just stake it and compound, stake it and compound, compound, compound. Yeah, I I agree. Let's see. Uh oh, this is a good one. Tom's got a good point. What would like to be able to take out the original investment and then some more along the way. That's a, that's a pretty safe strategy as far as like taking profit. It's a great strategy. It's this matter of fact, it's my number one yield strategy. So any asset that I invest in to get a yield from the minute it's given me my full ROI, yeah. I cut half or 30% immediately and take that profit right off the table. Hold on. So okay. It covers its ROI then that I'm taking profit and then I let the rest of the profit pay me every day until the project dies. So, okay. So tell me that again. So like, let's say you put a thousand bucks into a tomato coin. coin. Right. And tomato coin gives me, let's say three tomato coins a day. That's and the price nice. varies depending on the market. But at okay. some point that yield that it generates is going to pay off the thousand dollars of tomato coin that I invested in the first place. Hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I've, heard, I've got like three or four of these that have already reached that point. They paid for themselves. I've got a wallet full of them that are still producing more yield every day. And then I go into the wallet and I'll unbond a certain piece of it. Hmm. Right. So let's say I bought a thousand coins for a thousand dollars and I've received a thousand dollars in yield. I still have the thousand coins. Maybe the thousand coins is only worth $500. But it's still spitting out coins every day. I'll go into the wallet and I'll unbond and I'll take two hundred and fifty dollars of the coins out, and that's pure profit. See, that's and now the yield that's still in the wallet is still producing yield every day. Obviously, it varies depending upon the price of the coin at that particular juncture. But right. that's the strategy, and it's this is the concept. Crypto companies are offering us incentives to join or be a part of their networks. This is all part of their funding package. They know if they're going to have to have a project, they're going to need to incentivize users to come. So I'm just taking advantage of highly incentivized blockchains, no different yeah. than every one of us that likes to go to a retail outlet on Black Friday and take advantage of an incentivized sale of a television or toaster. I do actually like that. That it's sounds so good. different. Right. So, okay. So that's a, that's a pretty good bear scenario. Check out this one. Here's the, or a, a bull scenario. This is Jay Young Chow. He's always got good uh, questions and comments. Here's a bear catalyst. Bear catalyst, but probably the worst case scenario. Genesis declares bankruptcy, which is today Monday? Today's Monday, right? Yeah, today uh, is Monday. Yeah. So I believe they need like a billion dollars to fill that hole. So Genesis declares bankruptcy. Then, of course, there goes your Gemini urn. Grayscale, the Bitcoin trust, and ETH are forced to dissolve. I don't know. That's, well, that's the biggest issue. Gemini yeah. going bye bye is not a big issue, not a world ender. Grayscale, wow. that's a big issue. We've already established they have 635,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, quite a bit if of that hit bit. the market. Mm -hmm. If that hit the market for liquidation, I'm sorry. There's not enough Michael Saylors in the world to gobble <laughs> up that OTC. How, that how would about, be a big one right there. How about this? So let's say that does happen, and we start to see Bitcoin cascade down to, I don't know, 14, 13, 12, 10K. Would you be buying? Yes. Yeah, me too. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean. Now, you and I are lucky because we're in Latin American cultural places where yeah. the restrictions for stuff so we can always make jam and jelly or sauerkraut in our garage <laughs> and sell it at the farmer's market because people true? Are, you know what i mean yeah and we also live in places and climates where we can grow food easily like that whole backyard where the swimming pool is it that could mm -hmm. be a food producing garden 
and you would save money on food by eating out of your garden and the money you save on the food, you don't have to buy at the store that's all shipped in. You're buying Bitcoin. I might have to because have you seen the prices yeah, in Puerto Rico? It's super yeah, expensive. That's what you and me would do. All right. So how about this? So how about this? He talked about DeFi ban in the US. ETH. Here's another thing. How do you ban that? How do you that's, ban so you make a law, but how do you enforce that law? Well, it'll be the same way that they did with the tornado cash, right? Tornado cash. Because because here because here's my question to actually do an on ramp or an off ramp for cash. Well, you need a some type of centralized exchange unless you can actually hook into. I think someone told me that True USD you can do it, but True USD is a company that has a centralized point of failure. And even if you did that, they could say, well, we can do it except for Iran, North North Korea, and America. You guys aren't going to get it. And then they're like, you guys can do whatever you want to, but there's no on no more on and off ramps. I think that would be like one way, but they can't, you can't ban DeFi. And here's another thing. If you ban crypto in any, in any of the projects or any of the, uh, the big projects and also DeFi, it just creates a vacuum. And of course, it just goes to other countries. And guess what the other countries do? Well, thank you, because this is the new technology. We'll absorb it and you guys will be left out. So to, to shut down DeFi, to shut yeah. down DeFi, you have to shut down all on-ramps and off-ramps for all crypto. Well, for all crypto for United States citizens, if you're going to go that route, which mean, yeah, why, which would be difficult, why? but they could do it. Like I mean, they're they're in Canada, Bitcoin in the United States, right? Right. Very difficult. So, very difficult. How about this one, Jerry? We talked about this before. Everybody's freaked out about this. You get ETH declared a security. Everything besides Bitcoin becomes a security because all of a sudden Gary Gensler, who watches the show, he comes out and says, you know what? I told you guys, and we're going to ram this through in Congress. They're going to they're going to give me the authorization. We're going to just say that these are all securities. Let's say that happens. Is that doomsday? I Not personally don't think it is. Okay, walk us through that, Jerry. All right. Let's say every non-proof of work asset sure. becomes a security. Right. And all proof of work blockchains are deemed commodities by their nature. Okay. Well, okay. Schwab, Fidelity, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, everybody would be including those security assets in their brokerage because there's an, a massively large, already established licensed brokerage system to deal with securities. So, all it would take is if you're deemed a security and you haven't registered yet, come up with your hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars and register the goddamn thing. That's how much it is. Or or go away. Or it's, yeah, that's that the simple. thing. So you right. would have Cardano would uh, Cardano would issue their they would apply for their security license. Um, um, ETH would, uh, Near would, Polkadot would, you know, Algorand would, blah blah. You go down the list of the big boys, they would start they, there would be a line in front of the sec with registration forms already filed out <laughs> ready to go i well, wonder so like let's say that let's say that does happen and they come out would the sec have the authority to come back and go you guys were unregistered securities we're going to find you yes so what kind of fines do you think they could impose because i know like like with with eos it, it, would, it would be it would be they would set a standard okay right? it would set the standard and then everybody would be expected to pay the standard. It's 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 unfortunately the pay to play model of I mean it's the pay to play model. Yeah. And if we can we can rail against it and say how corrupt and un, un American it is. We can do all that, sure. or we can go about doing business. And that's the way business is being done for a long time. Yeah, it's slimy. Like it's slimy, but it is it is the reality. But but you know. Yeah, it is slimy. But us, the users, it's nothing. It's a big nothing burger. The only people it affects are the developers and the people that are actually governing the chain. Also, you know what else it is, Jerry? It's a, it's a great way to, uh, to generate revenue for the government, right? And why not? Well, anything, hey, anything to keep them from raising your taxes... <laughs> because let's let's look at this right this is my yeah. biggest thing and why i love your channel and why i love crypto 
because it started to teach me about economics. It started to teach me about monetary policy. Oh, I've sure. learned what money is as a direct result of being in this space. Oh, in this not, space, a human, yeah. not a working business owner for the last 56 years. It's being in this space. Learning about crypto has taught me financial literacy. And here's the thing. There's only two ways the United States government can fund itself. Taxation and the mm -hmm. issuance of debt. Of course. Right. Well, that's it. That is that's it. it. Yeah. So, so you have to think that fines and penalties are just going to be another tax receipt stream for the government. And if that yeah. keeps them from raising your income tax rate, right? Hey, right. Hey. On. <laughs> and that's why that's why like people say crypto is going to zero. It's not going to zero. There's too much money sloshing around. And of course, the big the the, the big names are here. But that's not a big thing. Government doesn't want you to stick your, your your cash into a savings account. Why would they want to do that? They want to tax you to so start spending. That's Spend. the whole thing. Spend and tax. The velocity of money is where money gets its value. When money is not sloshing around the system, money starts losing its value. Yeah. Hey, so what do you think about this one, Rocky? Rocky Bobby says, uh, Fidelity is now sending me marketing emails about Bitcoin. Interesting. They One of the members of my Patreon group, my uh, Beyond. Uh, here's my shameless plug: Beyond Moon <laughs> Investment Club. Um, one of my um, okay, got it. Investment members is works for Fidelity, uh, the crypto division. Really, and it kept her mouth shut for months until this last investor meeting, and she was able to disclose what's going on. Yeah, and she it's disclosed that loan, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they are looking at others, but they're waiting for clarity yeah. just like everybody else is. Okay, so here's so the next question. So this lady that was a fidel Fidelity, right? She was mm -hmm. part of the, not the board, but the, the inner workings. So they're going to start to invest and give their clients access to Bitcoin, Ethereum. So they're waiting for regulation. What happens when we get regulation? Well, it depends on what kind of regulation. If it's, if yeah. it's category... Uh, selection like this is what a security is this is a commodity this is utility this is a currency blah 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 yeah then i think you'll start seeing those funnels filled i gotta agree and there'll, yeah. be ones that, there'll be ones that are securities by the sec's definition but in their mind they're a commodity and they're going to apply for they're going to try to fit into the commodity funnel and there'll be some little gatekeeper right some little gatekeeper with the glasses and the pencil and the, the, yeah. the, the oh excuse me you're in the you're in the wrong line you need to be over there in the in the security line this is for commodities like bitcoin and litecoin and the 25 different versions of bitcoin that aren't bitcoin that were forks of bitcoin but now or no you know whatever that whole quagmire whatever. yeah so. okay here's a question from paul what's your biggest fomo and fail i'll tell you i mean so far i'll, I'll start with, i'll start i'll say it so i got into luna last year and it did well and then of course thankfully i had to sell a bunch of crypto because i had to pay for this house and i didn't really want to and i did and i'm it, it wasn't like i was smart enough to figure it out i just timing just kind of worked out and I sold a big chunk of it. But then guess what? I got, I, as soon as I sold it and I paid off the house, I went right back to dollar cost averaging and not like $10 dollar cost averaging. It was like, I was trying to make up for lost time. It seemed like, and I went in and in. not like, I didn't put like hundreds of thousands of dollars or six figures, something crazy like that, but it was enough to where I was like, damn, that's all gone. So that was my, I think that was my biggest one, Luna. Uh, I mean, I made some off it, but it's just how it is. Jerry, what do you got? I, I crushed Luna. I made a lot of money on Luna, but it was all in the in the the turmoil of the event. Ah. My biggest failure from an investment standpoint was a chain called SIF Chain, and it's in the Cosmos ecosystem. And my the big lure to me was they have this incredible Dex and Bridge. So you your SIF Chain wallet had an Ethereum address and had the Cosmos address. And you could get wrapped Bitcoin, wrapped Ethereum, da 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 da, and you could do all this stuff on their decks for like 
pennies, like fractions of a penny. And I thought this was great. And you could stake their coin in your wallet and earn 123%. So I took like 50 grand and put it into that wow. thing. And the yield right. was monstrous. And it was doing great. Yeah. It was, I mean, dude, in the first month, I had already got 45 or 25 grand, almost half in the first month because I was doing this combination of compounding and yield farming, yield farming, yeah. compounding, da, 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 da. and then it just went into the toilet. <laughs> and it months and months and months of sub penny, sub penny performance on an asset that I think my average cost is 10 cents. Did we get, did we get greedy, Jerry? Is that what happened? Sometimes I got greedy and I'll tell you what, I developed a new rule. Like you have your four rules that people see on the screen a lot. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. my new rule in this world of DeFi is I'm never going to commit a large chunk to any one thing ever again. Yeah. Yeah. That's so therefore don't be greedy. Go ahead. If, if something I put two grand, three grand, four grand into something and it'll pay itself off in three months and, and there's potential profit for years after that's great. Don't, that's you, don't be putting tens and fifteens and $20,000 at something when you're, you know, your portfolio is only 60, 50 grand. Don't be stupid. Yeah, don't be stupid. And if, I think we got greedy. I think we all got greedy in, in one way. Uh, Celsius being a big mistake. Ugh. And then um, the, the other thing that I, I was thinking about this, you know, another big mistake on my part was, was um, I thought that it was a good idea to tell people about crypto that I, that I, I thought would get into it. Like, this is just like family and friends, but they didn't have the same desire that say you, Jerry, or the people, everybody watching, you know, uh, Tesla, Jarky, meme, everybody that's that comes here all the time. Uh, Vicky, I mean, all you guys that are here right now, you understand that it's not a set it and forget it type of play. You have to be in this game. You have to understand what's going on. You have to make moves. And uh, I mean, not like big, huge moves, but that's it. So my biggest mistake was, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to tell anybody about it again, because if I tell people like to invest, it's a wrong play. I, I think the, the best way to say it is like, I, I've invested in the crypto because it's, it's going to change the world and then just leave it at that. And then once they want to learn, I'm not going to beat it in their head anymore. It's just like, you got to learn about it and you got to stay in it because if not, there's a lot of problems that can happen. Just look at like, if I mean, Voyager, Celsius, FTX. How many of us told our friends and family, you know, you could, you should use that. And now here we are. So, and of course, maybe, maybe you told them, but maybe you figured out later that, Hey, this is a dumb idea. I should probably put this in cold storage, but you didn't follow up with them to say, Hey, did you put it in cold storage? I think that's the bigger thing. And before, before Nick's head explodes, He's asked us 10 times, what's the EDEX we can try to set limits? I will tell you it's called, Jerry said it's DYDX. I have no affiliation with it. I don't have a link for it. You're going to have to find it yourself. DYDX. Okay. And then uh, Crypto Kool-Aid, who has nice glasses, says Cardano has no future. So just... Uh, Ouch. Ouchie. That that's, hurts. That's done. You know, it's interesting to me. I don't have a, like, I have this Discord thing going on right now. I have this back and forth with this XRP um, guy on Twitter. Uh -oh. And I love XRP, but I just think it's a horrible investment. It's great to have opinions that don't match, but do it in a respectful way. So I would ask, Cardano has no future. Why? Why does Cardano have no future? They seem to be one of the few projects that is actually building a foundation to have a future. True. I mean, they're slow, but that's good, right? I mean, that's how many times have we, have, we, have we rolled out DeFi products that were like, whoopsie, we'll have the back door open. Little problem with the codes, my bad. It was I'm only sorry. a million dollars worth of value that got that, taken. You have a point. It's just a couple billion. Only What's that bill. amount of friends? <laughs> All right. So everybody, I'm gonna take we'll take one more question and we'll get out of here. Uh <laughs> Willie, Willie doesn't want to answer your question. He just says Hoskinson should be in jail. Cardano's only about a, a money grab. Hey, you know, hey. I mean, look, look, here's the thing. There is I just what's this one? Exactly. I I just think to myself, 
you know, as far as like Cardano, there's this one project I just love. It was, I mean, there's a couple of them, but uh, World Mobile Token actually has real utility. It's actually doing things, giving telecommunications to, to people in Africa. 1.15 terabytes of, uh, of data being sent and zipped around on a 24-hour basis, which doesn't seem like a lot here in the States, but in a place like Africa, which had no internet telecommunications connectivity, that's massive. So just on that one, World Mobile, which is building Cardano, I mean, that sounds pretty good for me. And then, of course, there are some DEXs that are being done. There's some liquid assets. There's hopefully some new things coming out. Yes, it's slow, but like we talked about, hey, I'd rather, I'd rather have it slow and right than uh, have it fast and wrong. And the, my prime example would be, I don't care how long it takes to build an airplane. Just make it right so I don't crash. What do you think, Jerry? I could not agree more. All right. That's it. So that's it, Jet. That's it. I, I've, I've kept Jerry way too long from his... his uh, I thought you were his, saying, his, that's it, DGENs. That's it, DGENs. That's it. Uh, well, DGENs. just me and you, Jerry. I'm, the rest of the people are pretty. They have their heads screwed on tighter than us. Yeah, so that's it, everybody. So thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, again, uh, I want to thank uh, Jerry Hall for stopping by. It's been too long, buddy. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. All right, everybody. If you like today's video, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And of course, you want to win that shield folio, links in the description. And that's it. Adios. See you on the next one.